If you are a principal or partner of a design firm who got your license before the dawn of computer-aided design, you probably still design with a pencil in hand. But now that you lead a team of designers, you may feel a little old-fashioned that you still use a pencil. You've probably learned SketchUp to keep up with the times, but designing with a keyboard and mouse felt stiff and uncreative. By now you've heard that iPad drawing can level you up for the 21st century, but you're super busy and you have no idea where to start learning. Never fear. In this video, I'm going to show you seven different ways you can instantly begin designing on an iPad. But I warn you, after learning these seven ways, you may never go back to pencil on paper or keyboard and mouse again. Way number one is what I call starting from scratch or essentially starting as you would in a paper sketchbook. I'll go somewhat slowly in this first example because the same principles will apply to all the other ways. So here we go. The first thing I do in all of these is tap the plus button at the top. And in this case, I will choose the blank option to start a new project. That brings up a screen exactly the same size as the iPad screen with all of the same resolution. Then you just choose any pencil or pen you want, adjust the pen size, and begin designing as you regularly would with pencil or pen and paper on a sketchbook. I am staying extremely loose and trying to maximize the ambiguity of my sketch. You can also use the eraser in Morfolio Trace to help you X out the lines that you've overdrawn. And as I get to the end of this freehand sketch, I will add some sort of overall dimension. So in this case, I will figure that to be about hmm, 12 feet for the kitchen, 12 feet for the dining room. Let's make it 24 feet overall. Now I can go to the add a scale icon locate the crosshairs on that 24 feet, manually enter the number 24, tap the green button and I am in business. And then when I tap the scale ruler icon, note that that 24 feet corresponds to the scale ruler and I'm set up to get more precise now. Now I can also add a grid as a design assistant, tap on set grid. I manually enter the number in the grid and now I have a grid of two foot divisions that will help me develop this design further. And that's how you turn a freehand sketch into a scaled sketch in Morfolio. Now way number two is perhaps more common. It's importing a freehand sketch from an existing sketchbook or even a cocktail napkin. And I use the iPad to take a photo of that sketch. Now I'll repeat the same process as in way number one. I'll tap the plus button, then tap the blank icon. Now I'll go over to the layers menu on the right side and tap the import an image icon, then go to my photo library. And there you see that photo and that photo comes in and it's a little askew. So I'll use that handle at the top to make it as close to an average of 90 degrees up and down as possible. And you'll see why that in a moment. Now I'm going to also add a layer and that's more out of habit than of necessity. And I'll go back to that scale icon and line up those two crosshairs again on that known dimension. This time it's again 24 feet. Tap that green arrow. Now if I tap that scale ruler icon, you'll see that 24 feet is in fact exactly that scale. And I can even enlarge this now. And notice that the scale gets larger with the image. So I'm always in scale and I'll just begin drafting some exterior and interior walls right over this freehand image and save that extra step of doing more freehand design because it's a sketch I've already made. And that's how you import an existing freehand sketch to get started on a new iPad project. Way number three is to get started by importing an existing plan similar to if you were adding an addition to a home or something like that. So I'll start the usual way plus button at the top right. But this time for a variety, I'm going to go to the custom option as the second option and then order a blank page within that. And now instead of being limited by just the size and proportion of the iPad screen, I'm going to choose an 18 by 24 paper size and I'll assign a 1 8 inch equals one foot scale to that page ahead of time. So we'll see if that makes a difference. Now I'll go into that uh, add an image icon go to my iCloud drive and here comes the existing plan that I'm going to be adding to and fans of Frank Lloyd Wright will please forgive me and I'm going to order up the scale ruler and now the scale ruler is in scale relative to the paper size but not to the image so I'm going to go back and 
assign a scale to that image based on that known dimension of 92 feet right there at the top. And with that all set up, I can begin designing as I normally would with pencil on paper. I can add a layer and reduce the opacity or adjust the opacity, pick a pen, and then just start working out these new two bedrooms over the former servant's room in the famous Roby house. And don't worry, this is only a hypothetical example. Hey, just a quick interruption to say, if you are a design principal or partner and you are looking for a way to learn Morfolio Trace in the quickest possible way, check out the link in the description below to my Morfolio Trace Accelerator. It's only the lessons you need in about four hours and you can do it in just a weekend. I hope to see you there. Okay, let's start having some real fun now. Way number four is designing in perspective over an imported photo. So I'll go to the plus sign, to the blank iPad screen sized canvas document this time. I'll go to my iCloud drive and there is the construction progress photo I've already stored. It's gonna be a one point perspective and it's intended to be the background for a new garden design. So I'll add a layer. I'll go to the scale ruler because I want to get those parallel lines traced and figure out that vanishing point. But notice that that ruler goes to the wrong angle. So I go into my settings and here you see there's the option to go with infinity in terms of the angle that you're drawing. And that frees you up to draw a line, a straight line at any angle, just as long as you hold the tip of the pencil down at the end. So I'll go ahead and trace parallel lines that are receding to the distance, not worrying about where they intersect, but just being careful to make them line up with the lines that are already in the photograph. And if those lines all don't meet in the same place, I'll sort of average it out and then circle it where I think that vanishing point is. Now with that circle located, I'll add a layer and I will go up to the perspective icon. And I know this is one point, so I'll choose that one point. And this brings up a little crosshairs. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll drag it down here so you can see it. And then I'll place that crosshair right in the middle of the circle. And now I am all set up to draw in perspective. So I'll go ahead and start designing my garden freehand, the usual way, just like you would in a sketchbook. But at any point I can go to that scale ruler. And now I'll move it out of the way, of course, first. And that scale ruler, as long as it's present on the page, will allow me to draw using perspective drawing assist at any angle. Now I set it to 15 degrees, and that's just the default for the angles that it snaps to, but the main default will be to go to this vanishing point, and that allows me to quickly lay out this garden. It's a fantastic design tool, uh, really helps you visualize things very quickly in a very professional and final looking way, if that's what you're into. But you can always switch back to freehand design and put some greenies and growies in. It's a extremely flexible design environment. And as you can see from the final result, a very real way to design. Now the fifth way to begin design with iPad drawing is to design over a photo with two point perspective, typically an interior photo. And this is very similar to the same beginning. You, you add a iPad screen size drawing. You go to your layers menu, tap the add an image icon, go to your iCloud drive, find the interior photo you want. You pull in your photo, you import your photo, and make it the right size that you want. Set it up so that you can reach both vanishing points. And I'll go ahead and begin tracing. I'll activate the scale ruler, move it out of the way. I'll make sure it's on infinite in the toggled settings. I've got the wrong color here. Let me go back and get my famous red. And now I'll just trace those parallel lines off to the vanishing point, again, without looking at where they're crossing, but just looking at how close I am to making them exactly correspond with the photograph. Now we'll go to that second vanishing point. I don't have to do anything special or pause. I just go to that second vanishing point. And my goal is the same, to identify roughly where the vanishing points are. I've got those. Now I can go into the Perspective Drawing Assist tab, and I'll go to two point and bring up these two crosshairs. 
Then I locate them, add a new layer, adjust the opacity. This will be entirely up to you. Turn off the perspective drawing assist icon at first just to roughly lay out what I have in mind freehand. And as I'm doing this, I've got those vanishing points in mind. So it's like sketching in a regular sketchbook. But then I go back to perspective drawing assist and I can quickly lay out the furniture, make it look much more final. And there you have designing over a two point perspective photograph. Way to begin designing with an iPad number six is starting with Apple Maps. And this is one of my favorites, exclusive to Morfolio. So Procreate, please get your act together. But what you're going to do, instead of hitting the usual blank or custom, you're going to go down to the Apple Maps icon. Then you're going to enter any address in the world. And up comes that address. You may have to paddle around a little bit to find the right place. And it comes in as large as possible, limited by the size of Apple Maps or Google Maps in the same way they are on the internet. But once you have that and press the green arrow, then you can expand the drawing as you wish. Now, one of the most amazing features of this is that that photograph, that site plan, basically comes in at scale. So if I press the scale ruler icon and move it over, you can see that the 96, it's a little fuzzy, but the 96 on the map scale exactly matches the Morfolio ruler scale. So now I can reposition that. And again, because that has become an active drawing, I can add layers to it. I can enlarge it this time, enlarge the image. The resolution doesn't get any better, but I can enlarge it. And this is really good for site plan and large scale things, maybe not uh, designing an actual edition, but you can lay things out. So I'm laying out a 30 by 30 workshop edition to this home, and it's using all of the same drafting assistance that the scale ruler provides. In other words, verticals and horizontals, even though the scale ruler is at an angle. So um, you, again, you can't really use it for designing a house, but it's a terrific planning tool and a great way to get a kickstart on the overview of a project. If I'm honest, I think this is the most clever, and that is starting design on an iPad with a stencil. Yep, you heard that right. So you're going to go through all the usual machinations. You're going to go to the plus button, add a paper size of any size you wish, and then go to the stencils button. And next to the stencils button is the settings button. And the last stencil you used will always come up by default, but in the settings, you can choose from all kinds of stencils. And I'm going to go down here to the kitchen set of stencils, and I'll pick this ready-made U-shaped kitchen. And I'm going to reposition it because it does not come in at a particular scale. So you reposition it, make it what you think is the right size relative to the sheet of paper you chose. Then hit the little color beaker, and that will fill the stencil in whatever color is currently chosen in your pencil palette. Now I'll use the two finger pinch to reposition it once again like you would any layer. And then I'll go to the add a scale feature and locate those crosshairs in a two foot wide counter. I'll enter the two feet, press the green arrow, and now I'm in the scale. I'll go ahead and add another layer, adjust the opacity to my taste, pick my pencil and my color. And in this case, I'll start designing over this pencil freehand. I've got it locked in scale, but I'm not worried about the scale yet. I'm just going to go with my intuitions as a designer and lay out this little part of a house, this addition to a house that has a small family room and a dining room. Now I'll adjust the opacity of that and add a new layer because I want to get to my drafting and draft this up. And I'll activate the scale ruler. I'll bring that over. I'll use it to check a few dimensions first to make sure I'm kind of on target. Then I'll return to that freehand layer and uh, dial back the opacity of that drawing and then activate that top layer. You can see it's in yellow, indicating that it is once again active. And then with this scale ruler activated, I'll begin drafting over the stencil and over the freehand plan that I sketched at first. And because I've got my scale set, and I can adjust and toggle my line angles. I can use all the conventions of regular architectural drafting and get a head start on my project by beginning with a stencil.
If you are a principal or partner of an architecture or interior design firm and you want to learn iPad drawing in the quickest way possible, you should check out the iPad for Architects Morfolio Trace Accelerator for principals and partners. It's a four hour long online course broken into two two hour sessions that you can absorb in a single weekend. And it comes with two private one hour Zoom calls you can use at any point and for any reason. To learn more, check out the link in the description below. And in the meantime, be sure to watch this video that shows you how I design any medium or small project on the iPad.